Welcome to Central Kids. I'm Mr. Matthew, and we are so glad to have you with us today for our Central Kids online experience. Today, we have lots of fun planned for you through crafts and storytelling. In our time together, we will explore the central point, God is a deliverer. So, join us in Central Kids as we discover more about who God is and our part in the big God story. Now, can you guess what time it is? You're right, it's time for our 30 second dance party. Now, show off your best moves. Yeah. Today in our big God story, we're going to hear about a time that Paul and Silas were stuck in jail. When they were stuck in jail, they were all chained up. And so to help us understand the story better, we are going to make some paper chains. You're going to need some paper, some scissors, tape or staplers or glue, and markers if you want to decorate your chain. So first, you're going to have to cut the piece of paper into strips of paper going the long way. And you can use plain paper or colored paper and then use the markers to decorate them however you want. And then you're going to curl up the strips of paper into a circle and attach the ends using tape and you're going to attach more to it. And you're going to make a long chain. Now, you can then use the paper chain to decorate your house or use the chain to help you retell the big God story. Last week, we talked about Paul helping lead the church in Antioch. Paul didn't stay in Antioch all the time. God called him to leave Antioch and go on a missionary trips to tell people in other places about Jesus. God led Paul to many places while he was on his missionary journeys. In each place, God used Paul to tell other people about him. Today, we're going to talk about when Paul and Silas went to a city named Philippi. Philippi was an important city. One day, while they were walking to prayer, a girl followed them, screaming. She was screaming and telling everyone that Paul and Silas were Christians and how they came to tell everyone how they could be saved. This girl that was shouting like crazy was a slave girl who earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. A fortune teller is someone who claims to be able to tell another person's future. Paul and Silas could have ignored her, but they recognized that she was being controlled by an evil spirit from Satan. She was trying to stop Paul and Silas from helping people learn about Jesus. The girl followed them for days, screaming. It was not a good way for Paul and Silas to get attention. Finally, through God's power, Paul spoke to her. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her, Paul said, and God freed her from that evil spirit. This was very good for the girl, but not so much for her owners and their money-making scheme. The evil spirit had given her the ability to tell fortunes. Now she couldn't make any more money for them. This made her owners very, very angry. So they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the main part of town to face the authorities. The girl's owners accused Paul and Silas of throwing the city into an uproar, supported customs unlawful for us Romans to accept or practice. Soon a crowd joined in on the attack on Paul and Silas. Then the authorities ordered Paul and Silas to be beaten and thrown into jail. The jail was not a comfortable place to be. Paul and Silas had been beaten before they were tossed in jail, 
and were put in chains. How would you feel if you were in jail? Would you be scared? Nervous? Paul and Silas might have felt some of that too. They definitely look, would have been in pain from the beatings and, the, and uncomfortable from being in chains. But you know what they did? Inside that dark prison, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises to God. They loved God so much that even in a very bad situation, they praised him. As they were singing, something amazing happened. An earthquake. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. Wow! This earthquake was huge. God sent an earthquake at just the right moment and freed his missionaries from jail. This was great for Paul and Silas. But what about the jailer? It was his job to keep them all locked up. And now all the prisoners were free. The jailer was afraid he would get into really big trouble. But Paul and Silas hadn't run away. And all the prisoners were still there too. Paul shouted, don't harm yourself. We're all here. When the jailer heard Paul's voice, he asked them, how could he be saved too? Paul and Silas said, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. Then they told the jailer and the people in his house about God. That night, not only the jailer, but everybody in his house believed in Jesus. Later, Paul and Silas went to the jailer's house to eat. Together, they celebrated what God had done. In just 24 hours, one day, God had delivered the slave girl from the evil spirit. God had delivered Paul and Silas from jail. And God had delivered the jailer and his family from sin. God is a deliverer. The word deliverer is re a really cool word. In this situation, the word deliverer refers to setting someone free. God delivered the sa slave girl from her bondage to an evil spirit from Satan. God delivered Paul and Silas from the prison. And God delivered the jailer from a life separated from him by sin. God did all of this because he is good. He loves us and he wants everyone to know him. God still delivers. He still has power over everything, even earthquakes. He still loves us so much that he wants us to deliver us from the situations that make us afraid or sad. He still longs to be close to us, to deliver us from the separation from him. God wants our bondage of sin or fear to be replaced with joy and the peace of knowing him. In the story of Paul and Silas, we heard about different ways that God delivers people. He delivered the slave girl from the evil spirit, from Satan. He delivered Paul and Silas from the prison. He delivered the jailer and his family from sin. The word deliver means to save, rescue, to set someone free or redeem. God saves us from a life separated from him. He delivers us from temptations, from fear, from sadness, and from anything else that we need him to deliver us from. God is so amazing. Today we're going to reach out to God and ask him to deliver us from situations that make us afraid or sad. We can also ask him to save us from sin and to deliver us from separation from him. How do you need God to deliver you? If you're like the jailer and want to know how to be saved, all you have to do is tell God you're sorry for sinning and ask for forgiveness. If you're like Paul and Silas and you're facing a problem that scares you or is too hard for you, God delivers. No matter what problem you're facing, God delivers. In a minute, you're going to pause the video and find a spot where you can think about how you want God to deliver you. Maybe from loneliness or sadness, physical pain, family product problems. Maybe you don't have anything in your life to pray for, but someone else you know needs help. After you think about it, draw that situation on a piece of paper. I've drawn somebody with a mask on, because right now that scares me a little bit. Then 
here's what I want you to do after you draw your situation. I want you to draw lines. Remember where Paul and Silas were? They were in a prison. But God wants us to get rid of that prison and ask him to help us, and he will. Wow, what a great night in Central Kids exploring how God is a deliverer when things are hard and scary. That reminds me of one of my favorite verses, Romans 8, 28. If you know it, say it with me. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Even though Paul and Silas were thrown in prison and it was really hard and really scary, God used that hard situation for good because Paul and Silas followed God and were obedient in sharing the good news they had the opportunity to be used by God to deliver the slave girl and the jailer from sin. Even when things are hard or scary, I want God to use me to show people his love too. Give me a thumbs up if you want to do that too. Well, to end tonight, we are going to sing and dance to a song that will help us remember Romans 8.28. Are you ready? Stand up and do it with us. That was so much fun. We loved having you join us in our Central Kids online experience. We can't wait to have more fun with you next time. See you later.